Alors, bonsoir tout le monde, bienvenue à Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the study committee on strategies and public policies. Essentially, it's a meeting where we receive presentation from the community or from the staff, and it allows the municipal council to be able to ask questions uh, more freely and on an informal basis. No decisions are taken tonight. We will bring some there's never any vote that is taken. It's only an information for the councillors. And if there's anything on which we have to vote, the vote will be taken later on in the more formal meetings, if you wish. So it allows uh, to be able to discuss more openly without complicating the stru structure of uh, the matter without any further delay. Good evening, welcome for this presentation of the Pro Kid uh, program that we'll be celebrating shortly. It's 10th anniversary. Mrs. Tanya Doucette, uh, Mrs. Marie Scormier, the floor is yours. The mic is all yours. But don't run away with the mic, please. The, uh, the group following you will need the mic, so. Welcome, thank you for allowing us the time to talk to you about a program that is dear to us. We'll start by showing you a video where we talk about ProKid. Then we'll give you some uh, more information if you wish. Equality for us, equality to all for sport, recreational, access to all for our kids that should not be spe spectator for family events. Pro kids means a possible recreational possibility offered to the kids. Pro kids is a community, business, and devoted citizen that are devoted so that our less privileged children can contribute in recreational activities. Pro kids is to help the kids of Dieppe and Monaco who, for lack of financial help, cannot subscribe to organize events and thank to the city of Dieppe who will pay the expenses. All of the money given will directly to the kids. Why is that important? Some research shows some well-being for when our future population participate in cultural recreational activities. It helps the self-esteem. It allows to improve social competency as well as a better understanding of cultural differences. The physical activities constitute a good way to reduce obesity, improve the health and the growth of children. It contributes to better chances of succeeding in school. It reduces mediocre behavior and À sa première année d'existence, en 2008, Pro Kids was able to place 39 children in different activities. Last year, in 2017, a total of 375 places were realized for $74,200. The average per activity is $200. The rate of participation is equally distributed 52% with the kids and 48% with children in 2017. Also, we noticed that the request is greater for children between 7 and 10 years of age. It is without a doubt that ProKids contributes greatly to the family that helps. The requests are ever growing, and the ProKids wishes to increase its donation to be able to make sure that no kids will be refused a placement. The major financing is the SOC walk, which is held in October, where people walk from City Hall to the IG Co-op on the Abelbarth Pro. Kids would not contribute, would not exist within the country contribution of business people. We want to mention some of them. The cumulative amount are as follows. Diamond donor, 100,000 or more. Canadian Tire, Canadian Tire, 
Good set. Cool up at GA. And the Wildcats of Moncton. Gold. 10,000 or more. Scotia Bank. Rotary Club of the Group Frederick. Frederick Group. Rocky Bull Goodies. Brunswick Children's Foundation. United Commercial United Commercial Travelers. 4,000 dollars and more. Nets of Columbus. Defi Francophone de Dieppe. Ipia Robichaud and Associates. Foundation PA Paranto. Megan and Scooper. Service Master. And Uni Financial Cooperation. Kind Contribution CGM. CGSA. Radio Boutique. Mistral Communication. ID Concept. La Maison des Jeunes de Dieppe. The Dieppe Youth House. Merci Thank you very much générosité. for your generosity. We want to mention that big or small, every contribution is important. Donné, Whatever the amount, each dollar helps a kid in your community. We have to break the silence, please speak. It becomes unbearable. I will break the silence. You have a lot of details in the presentation. I'll give some small uh, details and Marise will give the statistics. My name is Daniel Duceta, President of the Executive uh, Director for three years now. So you are aware and you know ProKid. We're here to present the headlines, the main uh, the statistics here. The mission is to help every kid in our community of Bermuda and Cook and Dieppe to participate in cultural sports activities whose family are unable to do financially or whatever the family situation may be. The good aspect of recreational recreation is the reason why pro kids exist to give a chance, an opportunity to every kid to benefit from it as a mother. Um, mother of two children, I realize the cost of activities in the community, but also I see the difference that these activities brought to my children. I have two children, one who is uh, uh, slightly uh, shy, but the one is very shy. He would not have been able beforehand to run as president of his classroom. It's important for the you, for the kid in that community, and we are happy to give this opportunity to the young kids. They targeted the client. It's uh, the underprivileged family, loss of uh, employment, either separation or divorce, but also our new uh, arrival. We have more and more newcomers uh, to our community. We want to help them. Criteria of admissibility. First of all, they must be resident of Dieppe and Mamanco, goes what I'm saying. They must be aged, as you can see, between 2 and 18 years of age. The kids must be members of family with a lack of financial resources or other special family situation. The uh, youth must not already be registered in a paying recreational if they are also uh, registered to a hockey program. They cannot come to us to participate in a dancing group. We have a form that are available for community. They're available on the website of Dieppe and also the village of Mermancoke, as well as in the library of Dieppe and Mermancoke. And in the city hall here at, in Dieppe and in Mermancoke. So once the form are uh, filled, Send to Marie's, everything is uh, looked at. Then we look at the references. We have an approval committee that will look and say yes or no, we want to support them or not. Members of the board of directors, as you can see, myself as president, our vice president, Florette Landry, 
treasurer Peter McDonald, and we have directors in the room. Our Vice President Florent Laudry is here in, in the room. As director, we have Albasir, who is here tonight. And Casey, Ashley, Rubicho, Debbie, Terio, Jason, Casey, Isabel Godet, Melanie Godet, Pas Pascal Dubuis, who represents the village of Morocco, and Stephanie Ashton. I'll let Marise talk to you about the statistics. The main uh, headlines, it was started on, in May 2008. We celebrate our 10th anniversary this year. We incorporated on December the 8th, 2010. We also went to get a nonprofit uh, number. We received it September the 1st, 2011. Marmaco joined the program in March uh, 2012. And in March, we renamed the Marshall Badlen Co-op IGA. So we changed the name in 2016. And also this year, we were honored to win the award of distinction at the uh, Entrepreneur uh, Banquet uh, of the app. So, a uh, success. It grows. Uh, over the years, with the exception of uh, between 2014 and 2015, we had a bigger jump that year. This year also, when I prepared the document, we had a 110 investment compared to 67 last year. But today we had 140 application compared to 101 last year. So in the last few weeks, it was quite busy for application. During the summer, the registration are coming in very fast. Maybe we'll have an increase that is quite important this year. investment by age and statistics of 2017. So we see that it's uh, slightly more uh, young kids of uh, seven to 12 years of age. More of them participate, but it's, uh, we have more of 16, 17, and 18. Sometimes I didn't have many, but this year it seems to uh, go up once the kids uh, reached 16, they found a job, they didn't have time for the activities, and quite often there were less. But this year, th things uh, seem to be going better. Investment by activity, as you can see. Swimming, hockey, and dance is where we have the highest registration with swimming. There's several uh, sessions of uh, swimming. So statistics uh, includes uh, youth of different sessions. Hockey, we have 39 young kids in hockey, but it's for once, it represents 39. But the uh, 50, uh, 53 swimming could be maybe 30 kids instead of 53, if you wish. Uh, donation in kind. We have several association or organization that support us. The nice video that you saw, it's a, a focus uh, production entrepot that uh, did it for us. We appreciate that very much. Also, we have a partnership with several association. The association some give us uh, free uh, sub uh, registration, those who give us cumulative of this is 2008, uh, over $1,000. Hockey, probably the association with the, uh, is, um, has the, the, the highest uh, amount of money.
Here you have the values in 2011. We incorporated at the end of 2010, at the end uh, in 2011, accounting was done by an accountant. It was uh, more uh, better accounting. It's uh, remained between four, five, six thousand dollars. But in 2017, the partners uh, help us more, so we reach over ten thousand dollars in uh, discount or free. Uh, Ads. Uh, we uh, want to thank our association very much for their help. So the donor's diamond, I know you saw it in the video, but the city of Dieppe, which pays my salary and administrative expenses, very appreciated, can entire Bonaparte, Co-op IGA, and the Moncton Wildcats. The gold donors, Scotia Bank, uh, the Rotary Club, uh, for the group, uh, the first three years, it was our major when we undertook the program. Hockey uh, Bull Goodies, New Brunswick Children Foundation, and UCT United Commercial Travelers. Silver donors, is $4,000 and more, Nets Columbus. Defeat Franco funded the app. We had another $1,500 given last week. Foundation P. Parato, Mega the Scooper, Service Master, and Uni Financial Cooperation. Brown's uh, donors, it's $1,500 or more cumulative. Assumption Life, TD Bank. Brunswick Optical, Dr. Eden Huard, Lise Babin, and Roger Melanson, in Joma Engineering Group, uh, Concrete Contractor, McIntyre Finn, Pure uh, Video Yoga, Roy Byrne Associate, and Sikwa India. So the next uh, slides show simply announcement uh, ads in the newspapers to show the uh, Woolen Sox March, one that we organize every year. This is the first March that was held on October the 2nd, 2009. This is the ad that appeared in the Munitar Acadia in 2009. In 2013, we had uh, an ad to uh, thank our donors for their generosity. And here are uh, Woolen uh, Socks uh, March in 2017. Not only we will celebrate our 10th anniversary, but our 10th March. So we aim to have 100 uh, participants and we invite you to join us to reach our goal on October the 5th coming up. And also I want to note that our 10th anniversary will be held on May the 24th here at the City Hall. We invite you to come and join us. In conclusion, Pro Kid exists uh, for 10 years to help our children to grow. We're happy of, uh, of what we have accomplished to the children, their family. We acknowledge these opportunities. All the smiles and accomplishment would not be possible without the contribution of our generous communities. Thank you to the City of Dieppe, our donors, our association, and the individuals who support uh, this program. Thank you once again to allow us uh, to present our accomplishment tonight and to tell you what we do with our program, Pro Kids. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. Question from the councillors. Comments? Mr. Uh, Councillor Tibido, thank you, Your Worship. It's not a question, it's a comment. All the members of council, I attended their AGA last, last week, and I was able to notice the dynamic that exists around that table and I became aware that it's well registered. Congratulations to all the volunteers. 
it's for for a volunteer administration it's very well organized so pro kid is in good hand and uh, very proud that the count the uh, city council is supporting us good 10th anniversary and long life thank you very much the question is how many members will be there for the women's south uh, march all of you i had a problem with my knee last time i was there but first of all your worship thank you for giving us the opportunity to have presentation like this one as president of Leggett, I see Lise de Boutier in the back, who work hard for sports in the app. We see the de devotion that uh, you are bringing every day to our community. Madame Landry, Madame Godet, Cecilia, Mrs. Doucet, thank you very much for the time that you are giving. Not only that we help kids to grow, it's an investment in our community. They're kids who uh, live challenges and will have access to something that will be very special for that. I have two questions nevertheless. My first question is, there is an increase in investment. Is the request higher, the, the, the demand higher, or pro kids are the people more sensitized to the existence of your group? I know you do a good job, but what is the reason? It's both, in fact. Yes, the demand is increasing. People in our community know that the demand is there, but we do more promotion to promote the program in the community. So we participate in a lot of events, and we are there to educate the people in our community. And I saw there is an increase in the discount. So, <laughs> congratulations, Marie's. It's hard sometimes for volunteer in other organization to give a discount, but it's good decisions for the association to participate with pro kids. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Mr. Ayla. Nobody else? Thank you. If not, all I can do is repeat what has been said. Congratulations. Continue your good work. I've noticed on my, uh, October the 5th, and uh, I would say, unfortunately, it falls in a very busy time f because October, it's all the uh, AGM for all the municipal uh, association. We'll do our best. We'll do our best. Uh, a question? Mr. Sarris, no. Thank you, Your Worship. I have a small question. I was wondering, since you're doing such a good job and you have such an impact on our community and the one of Memorial Court, do you have statistics on how many people, how many kids are involved in both communities, Memorial Court and Yep? How many from each community? Yes. In 2017. In 2017, we had, I had 24 kids from Memorial Cook, and in 2018, until now, I have 12. Beautiful, nice. Congratulations. You're doing beautiful work. We're proud of you, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sassano. I have nothing else to add. Nobody else? Once again, thank you. Congratulations. And... We can't wait to celebrate. Next presentation. Let me find my agenda, if I may. So, a presentation on digital democracy by Audrey de Grasse and Abu Dakar. Surprise, I'm not Andre and I'm not Abu Dakar. 
Be assured, they are here. My name is Christine Pola. If I speak tonight, it's to allow to tell you why we're here tonight. What is this project? I told the students I would not take two or three minutes of their time. I'll be quick. I'm Christine Pola. I'm the professor of the public pol politics. Uh, uh, program. They work very hard to present the research that they undertook. A context why we're here. Well, it comes in a public seminary some, uh, offered by the University of Moncton. The subject deals with liberative democracy. Maybe you've heard of public participation. Sometimes that word is... Uh, more commonly heard by the people. As the app is uh, in the Valgarde city, you have a policy on public participation. You've already done exercise such as the participative budget to mention, but that one, there's more. We interested ourselves in the case of the app, and it gives some fruits. Some people know my face. I've been called to work with the municipality of Dieppe, being a proud resident of Dieppe. It brought some discussions to see how we could contribute together to try and uh, join the theory with the practice, university, the academic, with our communities. What we present tonight, a concrete example where we try to uh, unite the two, the students will present uh, this research, uh, a research that deal with participation, but digital, when we talk about participation of citizens in decision making, can we succeed that through digital measures, the new technology that we heard about every day. So it's a question with which they started, the construction of the research mandate started with that. So they did a scientific research. They will vulgarize it today to make it as accessible as possible. They went in research database. Uh, we did evidence-based decision-making. And uh, they went also to contact resource people, people who work directly with these web tool, with these technological tools that we present to you. They also went around the activity to try and see what is being done elsewhere. He has a case of the app as an example, but in comparison by analyzing it with what? Well, it's to go around the activity at the to try and incorporate it in their research. So they made a general picture of all of that. They went to analyze three different instruments. They will present them tonight. There's a really the uh, simply the top of the iceberg. We don't have time to present everything, but they will present three of these instruments. They studied them from two lens, analysis lens. But the example we could use to show what is an analysis lens is like uh, classes, there's different prescription that allow us to see things close or far away. The two lens that they decided to use is on one hand, the spectrum of public participation, different level of public participation, and they will explain what that lens is. And the second lens is really from your policy here in the app on public participation. They look at the digital participation from the policy to see if the instrument made the, the basic principle uh, which the participation of the app has given itself is to categorize the different instruments. So this gives you the context, the method that was used. And I complete with this the most important point of my update. My context is to say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity you're giving us tonight to present well, to these students, to be able to present you the fruit of their research it's uh, not often that we leave the classroom to have an opportunity like this, an opportunity that I consider to be golden. So thank you very much. Thank you to Luc uh, for the many contacts and the support he's given us in this cooperation. Thank you to the elected and the city of Dieppe for that 
precious cooperation while we're hoping that it'll be the beginning of future cooperation. So thank you for your attention, and I leave uh, the floor to the true Andre, the true uh, Andre Fire. Thank you. So, yes, I am Andre and Abu Bakar, my colleague is here. I'm going to give you a little bit the background, and he will present the tools, something that you might be able to use later. So here is the logical to have to talk about definitions so that uh, people can find themselves. And then we'll talk about the methodology and the evolution of the democracy. Those details, we will uh, give you the report. And then uh, an overview of the municipality. And as uh, Madame explained earlier, we were asked to present three digital tools in uh, public participation, parliament and citizen. The second one is uh, Demodine, and then the other one is Bang the Table. So for an analysis, a comparative analysis, and for recommendations to know uh, the logical next step. So we're going to start with a couple of definitions, first of all. Citizen particip participation, uh, we base ourselves a little bit. Uh, it's, uh, the first one is fun. It talks about the direct participation of the citizen uh, uh, to counter-effect certain uh, gaps. Then the second one is for a democracy that uh, responds better to the needs of a modern society, uh, meaning that's a society that's much more fragmented, uh, uh, divided, uh, more minorities. So the state cannot do everything to respond to those needs. So we want to give the mission to the citizens to decide. Then we have the deliberative democracy. That's basically a citizen participation, but at a higher level. And we can buy the concepts of discussion and reasoning. We put them together in uh, participatory uh, events. And then we have the digital democracy, which is just uh, all forms of democracy that uses the internet and other technological tools to improve the uh, democratic process. So I think that Christine gave you a pretty good overview of the methodology. So we won't spend that much time on it. So she mentioned the two lenses the, uh, for the analysis, uh, depending on the uh, instruments. The first one is adapted from the spectrum of the public participation of AIP2. This first lens, uh, we validate the instrument with this. Uh, does it uh, permit uh, citizen participation? So we have to represent the different levels of uh, public participation. As the higher we go, the more they're involved. If we uh, maybe compare to, for example, if we inform, that's just information to the citizen, where if we go to the next step, where there's consultation, there's also the element of information, but we also get some feedback. Then we grow, go up and go up. We, we'll be talking about the depth concept uh, specifically. The, the second lens uh, should is probably familiar for you. We see the elements on the left. There are a couple. They come from the public participation principle of the city of Dieppe, which is part of the policy in public participation, which was adopted in 2014. What we did was we put them together, you see them, the four of them, uh, so that the analysis uh, is simplified uh, and it helps us analyze the tools. So we keep the concept, but uh, we put them together to have a simplified analysis. And obviously this lens also will give us the opportunity to make sure that the the tools that are chosen are related to the expectations of the citizen of Dieppe. Maybe if we can go back. Uh, as you know, democracy started in antiquity. We talk about uh, uh, direct democracy uh, at the time. But today we talk about representative democracy, which is not complicated. It's founded on the decisional power that is given to the elected people by the people. So at the beginning, with the first representative democracies, we said that there was some type of interde interdependence of the citizen for the interest. They worked for the good of the public. This is something that uh, 
was set forth in the at the end of the 18th century. We're talking about uh, 200 years. Hence, we realize that this interdependence uh, was starting to uh, crack a little bit. Uh, and we start to see, we start to realize that there are a couple of difficulties uh, with this uh, system. So, Therefore, the desire to involve citizens starting in the 1960s, it's important to involve the citizens according to certain theoricians. Uh, participation in public life is one of the foundations of a healthy democracy. And the practice has become fairly w w wide uh, starting in the uh, 1980s, and we see more and more citizen participation. It's a constant a search for the renewal of this uh, citizen interdependence, as if we wanted to come back to what it was then. So we see that traditional systems work properly, but there are certain things that we have to improve. And according to the author that is being read, we see that there are different ways of seeing things. We talk about democratic deficits, uh, insufficiency of the uh, democratic representativity. Uh, we talk about uh, the absence of uh, long-term vision. There are some hot topics during the elections, but how do we focus on other things that are going on in, in politics? It, it's very difficult to take into account the changing preferences of the citizens, representatives, of the uh, citizens. So, generally speaking, we see that people get disinterested and disenchanted. The citizens are no longer uh, happy with politics. So, we want to try to counter these uh, faults. Uh, and the uh, four concepts that we see at the bottom of the slide, uh, we see this in the uh, policies of the city of Dieppe. Uh, we want to encourage also deliberations. Uh, we're talking about uh, uh, letting go of the public participation term. Uh, it's not negative, but it's become a symbol of deceptions uh, from the past, 1960s, for example, where we wanted to have the uh, citizens take part in decisions. But it was uh, basically to appear good or to say, OK, well, we're going to involve them, but we will be taking making the decision. So uh, that's something that was developed over time. But what we want to do now is to borrow the idea of the deliberative uh, democracy and deliberation basically is to examine the possible options, is to have a dialogue to, to make sure that uh, there are arguments uh, to see where are the weaknesses and where the strengths are. That's the principle of discussion. In democracy, deliberation must also uh, unite the individuals who have uh, interests and values that are different uh, in concerning one problem. So we have to listen, we have to convince one another to be able to make decisions where it will be good for the best uh, for the public. And so we come back to the idea of uh, making sure that the conversation is a reasonable one. There has to be also reciprocal uh, discussions, arguments. We have to make sure that it's transparent. So all these are things that we see in the lens number two and uh, the principles of the partic citizen participation. So we've just seen the foundation of our project. Let's go see how it's uh, uh, worked into the city of Dieppe. One of the first things that we can say, if we look at the profile of the uh, municipality, it's a distinction between uh, francophone and Anglophone residents, uh, be it uh, with age, the economic factors, social reality, the level of education. Uh, we can see that in a survey uh, with uh, citizens concerning the perception of the quality of life to see if the municipality has a, a bright future. So we talk really about the inclusion factor, which is important. And what we'll mention is specifically when we analyze the tools later on, is that the participation activities, uh, no matter how we term them, it's to give a voice to minorities. That's one of the ways we try to encourage this. And if we kind of jump around also, Diep has a population that is very young, young families, which means that there's a good presence in the uh, workforce, but it also means that there are difficulties when it's a question of getting involved. They're busy, they're working, etc. So because the population is young, 
the, there are uh, traditional sources of information, but the Internet uh, takes a very important place. With social media, there's an increase uh, that's very important. With the digital aspect, uh, there's more flexibility. And uh, with this, we've touched on the principle of accessibility. Access is to all these people. So still within the idea of the municipality of the depth, your strategic plan, you have an aspect on the uh, public participation. The objective is to increase the participation of residents. Uh, we already mentioned your policy that we use for our second uh, lens. But for our first lens, if you look a little bit at the uh, table at the bottom, you've already um, committed uh, different uh, levels where beyond the information there is consultation there is engagement and when we talk about engagement that is specifically it it's your participatory budget in 2015 uh, so it was the resident who made the decision what is even more interesting is the uh, assessment of the project it's a important aspect this uh, evaluation but there are results that are important there's a bigger feeling of uh, belonging of uh, pride but we also saw that there are some constraints uh, so we come back to limited representativity of uh, anglophones and uh, we talk about the seniors also we might be able to talk about them later but you also received some recommendations concerning improvements, and one of the uh, important aspects was the detailed communication plan, uh, which is an excellent recommendation. There is an opportunity to uh, bring together more people, uh, have a better sampling of uh, the community. And you're already on your second project of uh, participatory budget, and you added the internet element, which is uh, ongoing. There's something also new with the citizens' jury. The choices will be done by, made by the citizens. They'll be uh, judging the best. So it's just to say that uh, you have already a structure that is in place to implement uh, more the participation of the citizens. You've demonstrated leadership, and it's uh, visible at the bottom of the uh, uh, slide, a community that is uh, working hard at uh, uh, deliberative community. Edmonston is working hard. Uh, Moncton is also starting. They're going to be uh, working on a policy in uh, uh, public participation. But you still are the leaders, and that's an interesting point to highlight. Now, it's going to be the part where we talk about the tools. It's the most important part because you'll be able to choose which ones you want to choose. But before I invite my colleague to come to the mic, you should know that the model of uh, uh, this deliberative uh, democracy didn't leave much room for uh, tools. Uh, we talked about uh, gaps, uh, the uh, weakness or the lack of people voting, a lack of confidence uh, for the system, but uh, people want change. And according to the authors that we read, we're at the hour of the uh, digital uh, communication. I mean, it broadens the public space, maybe too much sometimes, but you'll see with the, with the tools, you are in control. Uh, you can save resources, time, money. You can get a better representative sampling of the community. So maybe one question to be asked, what is the choice? What do we choose? I'm going to leave my colleague to work on those details. But for that, you need a plan, uh, clear, detailed. You have to be transparent. You are already in your policies. This is what we want to uh, suggest with our theoretical framework that will give you with this project. You can base yourself on this. But we have to have a minimum of resources to make sure that there's a support for the decision makers and the specialists that you have in your community. And also to uh, get the uh, citizen participation. So you have to get these elements from the community to see if the tool is useful for the specific circumstance. And this is what uh, we're going to be talking about in this, and uh, this is where my colleague comes in. Thank you, Andre. I'm going to be talking to you about what we've analyzed. 
So before going to the analyses, there is a brief description of the tools. It's a criteria that will help us compare to figure out what is the best, or the strengths and the weaknesses of each. So in the table that you have before you, there are five criteria. In the first column, you have the use, what the tool can let you do and not do, to what extent they are already implemented and being used, and if people, is it uh, free? And also the language the, in a bilingual context. In the last column, you have the necessary resources. So that was one way of seeing the financial uh, resources for specific tools, for example, if they're needed in the city of Dieppe. On the other side, you have the instruments, the tools. These three tools. It gives you the opportunity to have uh, the policies, policies that come from the elected people and the public. Uh, for in a citizen parliament, there's a, it's an initiative that comes from the elected people. They want to have a policy on uh, cleanliness, for example. They say, okay, how can we work this? They ask this to the citizens. And then there will be a dialogue that will come up with a policy that will come from the elected people and the uh, public, which makes it more legitimate. So the three tools will be compared to see what they can do in the second table. Citizen Parliament is used more in Europe is a municipal aspect. In Lac Mégantic, also in Quebec. Romania, in France. We can see that there's a context that is similar to Canada. For example, in Newfoundland, in St. John's, in the European Parliament. The other tools in the language we see French and English, they're all most bilingual, but the Parliament citizen is not bilingual. It's going to be for the end of the year. There's a platform in both language. There won't be a specific answer for the price because the definition isn't clear. It's going to necessitate human resources and financial resources to implement. It also depends on the use that are going to be done, the surveys. These are different processes are different ways of using it according to the different platform. Now we go to the different uses of the lens. So the first lens is an analysis of the spectrum of the continuum that you see in the bag, which is the progression of public participation. So here we have in green criteria that validate the tools. So we have informed consult. There are part of the evolution. It indicates the citizen power. And we see that the three tools validate these four first columns. But then delegation and empowerment is specifically citizen decision. For example, for participatory budget, they say, okay, we accept it, and then we implement it. But at this stage, state, we haven't established that these different tools will be uh, the subject of deliberations. When we go to the second lens, 
And we're going to take each tool in the, independently so the uh, tables are colored, coded, to facilitate everything that is green, our criteria that inclusive participation, different principles of the public participation policy of DEP. So instead of having 10, we have four here. For example, the first tool that we took is uh, citizen parliament. They validate all four except for, except we take the concept of inclusivity, that is uh, uh, it's a paying category, We uh, different resources. But the other criteria which we find different is that the, those who are not technology, they're not they cannot use this platform. The second tomb is the Modine. That's with the four criteria here. But here, the Modine is a, not a tool that is for municipalities or governments. It's a tool for civil society or nonprofit organizations. So it's the citizens who implement themselves policies or take make an, uh, work with initiatives. So the elected people join these people, but it's not the will of the elected people that is going to be important. It's the citizens. And together they will establish a policy. We also see with the evaluation, it's difficult to confirm with the information that we had. It's part of your policy. Did it meet the needs of the criteria? When we talk to the third instrument, which is bang the table, it uh, meets the needs for all. It's not good for people who are not good technologically. We figured it was very important to make a recommendation after the analysis. So already public participation is something that you do, so it's not a recommendation that we're giving you, so that's really good. But the second, you're already at your second participatory budget, so you're ahead of other municipalities. But what we might want to suggest is, for example, deliberation, like Andre expl explained, not necessarily just for the budget, but we take the conclusion of the 2017 survey, we see that on questions like quality of life, future community, there's a difference of 20 percentage points of between Anglophones and Francophones. So there is a message behind this uh, gap, and it has to be deliberated, but the digital democracy The uh, information sources, internet with 40%, uh, so it's basically stable between 2014 and 2017. Mag, which is a paper, has fallen 12% uh, since 2014, and Facebook has increased since 2014. So there's a trend towards the digital. With an average age of very often there's a, okay, there, people are busy, so uh, they're not capable, but with the internet, it's better because it's available 24 hours a day. At the first level, we put bang the table, which is uh, basically a context in, for municipalities closer to Dieppe. It's free. There can be a uh, participatory budget and tools that are user-friendly. Citizen Parliament is a second place, so we don't have a Canadian experience on this type of tool. Co-construction is at the initiative of the elected person. Public participation, the volunteers can use the 
participatory budget for other things. So that's the classification that came out of our study. The next steps. Human resources, financial resources are not necessary. We need the engagement of the elected people, staff, and citizens for this type of consultation because we see already, even in Quebec, municipalities can be dispensed from referendums. It's a trend towards participation. important role of communication to make people aware, to help the trend towards these uh, tools. So there will be a report. Thank you. Do you have questions? Questions? Madame Arsenault. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We know that uh, the participatory budget, this uh, project, uh, was excellent. Uh, democracy is there. We can see it in the work that you've done. Democracy is there, inclusion, transparency. It's beautiful. It's great. And uh, we really have to continue uh, in that direction. Congratulations. Very nice work. Monsieur Godet, a very nice presentation. Congratulations on your nice work. There's an element that I'm not too clear on in your study. Uh, the whole question of uh, citizen participation in different committees. We have committees that are set up that address certain topics in the municipality. So there is participation, but it's very difficult to keep up. I don't know if it's a, if it's lack of interest or uh, maybe uh, activity at the committee, but uh, year after year we realize that to get people involved in these types of committees, it's difficult. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a very important uh, on governance, on participation in the municipality. So have you studied this aspect? And if yes, do you have any suggestions? We've discussed it from time to time. And one of the elements that we uh, look into is the possibility of having maybe more ad hoc committees. In other words, we choose a topic. We choose what we want to obtain. And then once we've reached it, the committee is uh, is finished. So do you have any comments on this? I think that my colleague is taking notes. It's very important. It's something that we're going to be looking into more detail in the report that we will be giving you. But uh, digital democracy, the digital aspect, could probably give you possible solutions. Uh, we don't necessarily uh, have to meet in person. Yes, it's important in certain instances, that, but there is that element. But there's also the important element, and we can see it on the uh, uh, screen, the important aspect of communication. Obviously, it's going to be uh, it's going to interest uh, usually the same people. We see them coming back. But what we've seen in our readings is that uh, the digital aspect, the internet aspect, uh, can probably interest more people, uh, basically a better representation of the population in general. So we'll take note of it and we'll look into it. Thank you, Mr. Gaudet. Anyone else? Well, Mr. Gaudet, I think Des fois, je me demande si c'est pas juste l'utilisation du mot politique qui, euh, qui jusqu'à un certain point, euh, les gens pensent qu'ils vont être peut-être étiquetés d'une façon ou d'une autre avec le mot politique, puis peut-être qu'au lieu de, 
Je ne sais pas, euh, mais je, on, on rencontre euh, évidemment souvent ce, ce problème-là avec les comités. Alors, c'est pour ça que la dernière, je pense, les dernières... The last discussion we had was kind of a town hall, a town hall meeting, uh, as such, where we seem to, uh, Mr. Gaudet mentioned it, we uh, would discuss very specific uh, issues. We talk about uh, connects uh, issues and not something that is uh, directly uh, related to your analysis would be interested in hearing your comment or those of Mrs. Christine. Also, next course, next time. Of course, the tools allow us to uh, give you tools for participation in general, but also for specific, uh, there's all kinds of uh, options and you'll see this more in details in the report that will be presented to you. I knew she could not resist, she has to talk. Christine, as you said, the object of this mandate was digital uh, tools, but by listening to us, it would be interesting to know why these people don't run for office, don't uh, let their name stand. But it's once we understand why the people can be different reasons, from that we can be in a mode of action or mode of uh, solution seeking. And maybe the general uh, element, as Andre was mentioning, there's other students, I want to mention Natasha Moncourt, Francois Selbert, and Maxime Malo, who have also, also worked on this uh, project. So in answer to the first step, that would be the diagnosis of your standing committee, this uh, report maybe proposed uh, some solutions we will never know until we uh, have a diagnosis. I definitely have an opening on my committee. We'll talk about it. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. I think we have to know that today may be different than the past. People are more committed in several activities, whether it's a family activity or business activities. Quite often, we don't have a quorum for different committees. We can't make decisions, we can't accept recommendations without a quorum. So if we use the means, if we develop digital uh, means, we could approach, we could connect with these people on, uh, on a more flexible approach. Uh, I, I like the idea that you've worked on something that uh, has a success, but I wish that part of that study would look at something uh, which we have pro uh, problems with. Thank you. Thank you, both of you, for your presentation. And we hasten to see, essentially, you uh, stop, you finish two minutes from the time it was allotted. So we can't wait to have the final product. Next presentation. Twenty dollars per uh, phone call. When a phone rings, it costs twenty dollars, says the mayor. Next presentation from MAGMA, the Multicultural Association of Greater Moncton Association. We welcome Chantal Aurier, Monsieur Georges Amour. Georges, happy to see you again. And uh, Miriam McNee. Good evening. I'm Miriam McNee. I'm assistant director at MAGMA. I'm here with uh, Chantal, the executive director, and I'm vice president of the board of director, Judge Lamonca, who you already know. I'll talk about our EGM. It's uh, bigger. 
we have 13 of them uh, barely agency in the province, but we are the largest one staff-wise. So we've been in the community for 30 years. So tonight I will cover the department that exists uh, in the AGM. I'll talk about the services we offer to the clients. Uh, our mission, our mandate, and mission. I will talk about our mandate and mission, and I will give an overview of the five departments that we have within our agency. Our mission is to enrich and improve the well-being of our community by encouraging and promoting the respect, the openness, and the understanding between the persons of different culture and different origin. Our mandate, it's in English on the slides, by the way, but I will read it in French. Our mandate is to sensitize the community to the uh, cultural diversity and to help the different uh, immigrants to adapt themselves, to integrate, to uh, include the uh, different diverse, uh, to uh, favor exchange between persons of different origins through the respect, support, and understanding. Our mandate also is to propose language courses in English or in French, depending, and also to protect, promote, the right, the uh, human rights. It's very hard to manage three things at the same time. I'll give an overview of our different departments. Our department where the activity is called the hat of the activity. It's a department which is responsible for the client upon their arrival at the airport until they become Canadian citizens. It's the settlement department, as we call it. That department, figures that you will see throughout the presentations are figures that go back to March 2017 until the end of January, uh, April 2017 until the end of March 2018. So throughout, the 12 months we receive 117 refugees and 1,150 independent clients. They're clients who are not refugees. It can vary between permanent residents, uh, people with temporary visa, students, or temporary workers, or people who want to explore the province to eventually settle here. The number of clients went up to 1,150 during the last fiscal year. In the settlement department, we offer many services. Among these, we have, for instance, uh, 6,807 medical uh, appointments. We help with these. We accompany the clients to meet with the doctor to translate uh, most of the time. We have 640 active volunteers who speak 27 different languages. Our team, our soccer team, won the League of Champions last year in 2017, the Magma League. We deliver, we offer workshops in uh, life competency to 180 people. There are workshops that can include the scales uh, of kitchen, safety in the house, house safety, uh, as far as uh, how to be a good parent, uh, how to help the children with their homework, and so on and so forth. And during last year, we sent 180 children to attend summer camp. The photographs that you see are uh, photographs of uh, our activity last year that is happening on a weekend where we take some of our clients, 61 clients participated in this activity last year. We teach them how to do some camping, how to spread to open a tent, how to spend an evening or a night in a tent.
we have another activity that happens every Wednesday. It will uh, end at the end of April. It's called homework, housework, but it's uh, we have a group of, uh, it varies each week. It depends on the need, and it's mostly to help the students with their homework, those who uh, lack in the uh, elementary and senior high school. Our language department, we offer 23 classes, more than 23 classes. Our language course vary between uh, basic uh, literacy course. We receive clients who are uh, illiterate. We offer general English language, we call it LIN. They're, they're certified by the uh, federal government so, so that we can offer them to immigrants. We offer courses of citizenship for those who are interested uh, in applying to uh, become Canadian citizen. As you know, there's a test to be taken so they need to prepare themselves. There are courses of uh, uh, conversation circle. There's uh, language uh, courses, uh, some that apply to different sectors, and uh, more than 23 people. We had 164 registration during the year, so 192 uh, graduate. Our pre-employment department, as I said, the figures that I'm giving you go until the end of March. There's a few uncertainties about this department, uh, about the funds, because uh, uh, our uh, fun, uh, funder is the province of New Brunswick. The department is composed of uh, counselors and pre-employment counselors. They offer uh, councils, uh, to the different clients, but also workshops for integration in professional. We had 78 initial evaluation of our clients to see what level they're at, profession, at the professional level, if they're ready to integrate the professional world. We had 176 uh, uh, course uh, with these clients, and we offer 52 uh, skills, uh, workshops specific to a given sector. Our workplace integration strategic initiatives. Uh, it's a department that is responsible for different pilot projects such as the Atlantic pilot projects, the Atlantic uh, immigration. We have the highest figure in the province uh, during the last five, uh, fiscal year, we had 162 evaluation of the needs of our clients. Uh, they will come here eventually. They got a job with an employer from the province. So this is one of the program that uh, I manage. We establish partnership with 48 employers so that they can participate in this program. We delivered uh, 25 sessions of cultural courses to the employer. These are training that the employer want to offer their employees uh, if uh, they want to have a, an inclusive working environment. They have immigrants, they want everybody to work in harmony. So we offer an intercultural uh, skill training. We also have a mentorship uh, uh, program that started not too long ago. We tried to expand it. With the, we uh, uh, work with the city of Moncton. 11 of our candidates were accepted by the city of Moncton to be um, mentored by employers from the city of Moncton according to their uh, past uh, uh, environment. Our care for newcomer children, it's a service that we offer when uh, students are following a course with us. We'll keep offering service when a clients are in consultation or have an appointment with uh, a counselor. But for the time being, we have 53 children age uh, under one and a half years old. 
and 278 children who are uh, preschool children. I presented the operational aspect, but as I said at the beginning, our mission and our mandate is to work with the community to be more inclusive and to have an integration for an integration that is favorable. I'll let the shot out cover the next part of it. Good evening. Thank, thank you, uh, first of all, to your, this is my, making them, I want to know if I can have my $20 from Mr. Thibodeau at the end for his phone. Thank you, Mariam. I'm Chantal Poirier. I've been the director at Magma for a year and a half, uh, a month and a half. In a, No, in October, I will have been there two years. When I started as a director, started 38 employees, and we now have 74. Something that Miriam did not uh, mention, but we are expanding very fast. I moved to Dieppe in 1989. I live in Mermancook, but when I moved to Dieppe, I uh, attended school in Dieppe, then I went, I attended Major Martin School. When I went to Major Martin, the only people from the area that I knew were local people who live in my area. Very seldom did we see immigrants. For me, it changed very much. Sometimes we would go to Champlain a shopping mall and we would only see uh, local people, very few immigrants. I have three children. One who's in Major Martin, when he comes home and he talks about his experience in Major Martin, very different from when I live when I was younger, and I'm very happy to hear those experiences and to see that the culture has changed a lot. When I started working with Magma two years ago at the MGM, I had an employment uh, offer elsewhere. The offer uh, was one that I would make a lot of more money and a pension plan. The reason why I stayed with Magma is because Magma has a heart. People, the client who are with Magma, and everything we do at Magma, we do it from the heart. For me, that is very important that the people know that Magma it comes from the heart. It's important that the people feel included. So I see the employees who give a lot of their time, even the volunteer who are on the board, to make our clients feel that they are never alone and they feel they always have someone to turn to. For me, the employees who work there, the 74 employees who work with Magma, they don't work 40 hours, they work much more than 40 hours. It's important that our people feel supported and there's always someone who will answer the phone no matter the time of day. So during the holiday season, I'll give you an example of the activities. During the holidays, we celebrate Christmas. We give them the experience of a Christmas in Moncton or in Dieppe or Riverview with uh, Santa Claus. It's something they've never seen. These are activities and we try to include them in the uh, community. Another example would always be the month of Asian heritage in May. We start our activities, you see, some announcement will be made for the month of May. And uh, several events are very important, but those that are coming during the summer, the major one is the Mosaic Festival. You've heard of Mosaic, I'm sure, where in our 14th uh, edition, we are presently planning, but if you saw an article appeared last Friday, this year it will be one of the best year yet. We encourage the people to open themselves to other communities, to mix up with the immigrants from the region. I would like to let George talk to you a little bit more about your worship. Good evening. 
Madam Councillor, gentlemen, I will thank you very much to give us the opportunity to talk in more detail about MAGMA. I want to introduce myself, several of you. I'm Georges Navo. I am a, a new resident of Dieppe, but I've been here five and a half years that I move here. I'm in business, owner of five restaurants, McDonald, three in the city of Dieppe. I am a happy citizen of the city of Dieppe, and my son, Frederick, what people don't know as much, I am myself an immigrant. I'm from uh, Liba. I left in 76. Liba was, had a very somber period, similar to today. I arrived in Dieppe at the age of 17 with not much in my pocket. I won't uh, tell you my story because each immigrant has its own story. It's not my purpose tonight, but I would like to talk to you more about what immigration can bring to Canada in New Brunswick and in the app. I want to underline, first of all, that the city of Dieppe gave Magma a beautiful gift by letting us use Mrs. Patricia Asano, counselor on our board of directors, she does a fantastic job, and she represents very well the city of Dieppe. Thank you, Patricia, for everything that you do for us. You know, we have a problem to imagine what immigration can bring us, and sometimes we think it's an expense, it costs a lot, doesn't give much results, but let me tell you something. We need immigration. Everybody knows figures. Everybody knows that New Brunswick is going downward uh, uh, with its population. We benefit from the f f influx of uh, outside regions to the app and we need immigration in Canada. You have one Canadian on five is born outside of Canada, like myself in New Brunswick. We talk about one on 25. It's very few. We don't attract them. However, we have a lot of tools to attract uh, immigrants. The first tool that we have is the university. University bring us a basin of uh, foreign students come here, spend four or five years, they fall in love, uh, have a family, they have a, a diploma, they're francophones at the beginning if they came to the University of Moncton, they learn English while they stayed here and they're ready for work. It's the best immigration is the one on which we have to uh, base ourselves. As a member of MAGMA Board of Directors, the first objective we should have. An immigrant who comes here, we say it costs money to integrate him or her. Yes, true. And yet, it costs less than someone who is born here. Think about it. Someone who is born here at the, at the outset, at the hospital, it costs money. There's vaccination, there's schooling, activities, hockey. <coughs> we have to make those people live, their studies, everything that follows so that people will become productive. An immigrant who arrived here at 20, 21, 22, or 23 years of age, he's educated, he was born, vaccinated, all these expenses are things from the past. If we have the chance of falling on immigrants who represent success without uh, bragging and without uh, being pretentious, I can tell you that the tax that I pay to the city of Dieppe, personally, for my business, my residence, and everything, represents a very a good amount. Other uh, immigrants like myself, I think of uh, Max Amani, who is in business. He's a friend of mine. He's successful. And oncologists who work at the hospital, they come here and they contribute widely. How much is that worth? How much can it cost? 5000 to attract? 10000 20000 It's hard to quantify, but it's worthwhile. The result will not be seen immediately, but we'll see it in the future. I arrived in 76, I got married, had two children who got married, uh, who grew up, got married and have children. I arrived in 76, we may be seven, eight, eventually nine or ten today. That's long-term work. We can see immediate results, tomorrow morning that is. And there's a program here that is very popular, I think you heard about it, it's the New Brunswick Pilot Project. It makes such that employers and 
I subscribe to that program, they can more easily bring uh, uh, foreign workers or they can have them to become permanent uh, residents. We have to adopt that program because to attract immigrants is one thing. But to keep them here is something else. Sometimes we say, yes, we can attract them, but once they're here, what do we do to retain them? I can tell you one thing. When I arrived in Dieppe five and a half years ago, very quickly, Monsieur Lapierre, you invited me to a breakfast morning at a golf club to make me people meet. I felt well received, I felt at home in Dieppe, and since then, I'm very happy. Of course, as a businessman, we have these contacts, but do we do it for each citizen that arrived from outside that feel uh, left uh, apart? Maybe that's something that should be studied, should be looked at. Immigrants are looking most of the time is safety, security, is to uh, uh, guarantee a future for their children to find a place where they can grow. And the city of Moncton, of Dieppe, can be that place. I throw a suggestion for what it's worth. One of the greatest desire is for an immigrant to buy its first house. You can't imagine the pride of an immigrant when he can find a house. Why wouldn't it be the app? Why wouldn't it be a tax reduction program for an immigrant who's here for less than 10 years for the first four or five years to uh, you, uh, choose the app instead of another place. I've seen it elsewhere in Quebec where they want to attract immigrants. If an immigrant bought his house and spent five years, the children went to school, uh, they will stay. There again, it's uh, investment of more or less long term. Today, what I would like to do is build a bridge between Magma and the municipalities, namely the city of the Ep. What attracted me to Magma was the Syrian crisis. When the Syrian arrived in great number, Magma was uh, uh, overboard. Since I speak Arab, I did a lot of volunteer. I was a volunteer from time uh, from one thing to the other. I joined the board of director and I'm now vice president. My purpose is to build a bridge with the city of Dieppe and of course, obviously, as my speech is I'm there to ask some money, to ask you to be partner with us for the Mosaic Festival. We have the gold partners, of which I'm a partner. I've been uh, giving $5,000 for the second year. I'm a gold partner, and I'd be happy to see the app. Join us as a gold partner. Last year, Mr. Godet was present at the supper that we organized for the municipality and the VIP. And this year, I wish Mr. Lepia would be present as a gold partnership. Partner, thank you very much for allowing me to present Magma. If you have any questions, we're there ready to answer these questions. Thank you, Mr. Dabour, George. Thank you for your involvement uh, at the community level, which is fantastic. We talk often about you and your son. The citizens who arrive here, uh, covered themselves, got involved in the community, and I thank you for that. I'll let Mr. Ella. It, uh, talk and it's a beautiful story to say thank you George for having uh, related Chantal I attended but you might not also my father worked for the immigration uh, agency for the years he's 72 years of age uh, I was an immigration officer with the province in Brunswick I said at Mi'kmaq. I said when there were only three uh, agency, settlement agency, Moncton, Franklin, Florentville, and St. Jean was not even there at the time. So there was an evolution. We're talking about evolution of democracy. There was an evolution in New Brunswick. And I can tell you that each time we talk uh, with the uh, uh, Jeanette Petitpoit Taylor, our MP, we talk about infrastructure for me. What excites me, our immigration program that we can bring back federal money for our region. People have a choice to go anywhere in Canada, but as George says, it's uh, 
one thing to sensitize them, to sensitize them to choose New Brunswick and Dieppe as a city of settlement. So the Mosaic Festival, a beautiful initiative for the region. I have three questions. The first one is, as for the language training, uh, citizens, there's English courses. Any French courses being given? No, unfortunately, it's courses in English only at Magma. But uh, the uh, French citizenship course, there's one at uh, NBCC, the New Brunswick Community College. Thank you. Second thing, as for the economic development, you were talking the relationship with mentorship. Do you have any uh, relationship with uh, 3 Plus? La Huche, uh, we're uh, one of the sponsors. Uh, that organization work uh, with you? Yes, there are links. We work with 3 Plus. Uh, and also, somewhat, the city of Moncton, 3 Plus, and Magma meet together for the mentorship. But it's like my EM said, it's a new project that the city of Moncton. Uh, give us to start with and we're at the beginning of the first phase we're still working with three plus but maybe as you mentioned with the sponsors there was a pause uh, uh, in the program but we expect to start it over again in june uh, and my last question concerning the integration within our community and i talk about new brunswick or greater moncton but for example there are 1300 new arrivals 117 refugees uh, how many would have come, how many would have chosen Dieppe as their municipality? Not many. I think there are two families that settled in Dieppe within the last year, but I couldn't tell you 100% if they're still in Dieppe. And the reason is when they come here, they've chosen already English as a language, and that doesn't come from magma. You know, when they arrive here, they're already chosen. They've studied in English. So when they do choose that, they uh, consider English schools, so they go to Moncton, where housing is maybe less expensive. So all these aspects put together, that's the reason why they're in the same region around Moncton. I mean, we try to encourage them to go to Dieppe. It's uh, starting to pick up a little bit of a momentum, but... Uh, we would appreciate help if uh, anybody has any suggestions. Maybe to add, the city of Dieppe is very spread out. So for immigrants who are looking for uh, public transport, uh, proximity to downtown, they're going to position themselves in the uh, downtown neighborhoods. Uh, okay, the older Dieppe, if I may say, around Paul Street and in the back where it's a little easier, Yes, but it's more difficult with uh, transport. Uh, I mean, so they, they basically tend to generate their also. Th three Plus is an organization that uh, call on me through Magma to uh, give uh, speeches or conferences to uh, investors. So, yes, we do business with them. I know that we've started a process to uh, hire an immigration officer here in Dieppe, I believe. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I think it's... It's a wake-up call, uh, as we say in English, to uh, go with this uh, challenge uh, that is given to us by Georges. Uh, I mean, uh, my family devoted its life to immigration, my father, myself, uh, so it's something that's important. So I'm going to pick up your challenge, if I may. Uh, maybe a little bit of an advice in all modesty. If I go on the uh, website of the CDDEP, it's very nice. Uh, I see all the activities, there are a lot of things, but I don't see any visible minorities. Obviously, as an immigrant, an immigrant is going to tend to um, identify with uh, other people that look like him. And if he doesn't see them, he's going to say, well, maybe I'm not that welcome here. And I'm not saying that DEP is not welcoming immigrants, but to add something on the website, maybe a little more visible minorities, that could probably send the message that, yes, we're uh, waiting for you. Uh, because, I mean, it's, uh, it's like it's the snowball effect. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Alain. Councillor Godet. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First of all, congratulations on your presentation. I have the impression that majority of the greater Moncton population don't know the 
extent of the work that you do. I was uh, really impressed. Uh, it took me quite an effort to understand the breadth of uh, everything that you do. There's a lot of activities, a lot of participation. Congratulations. My question is mainly on the spirit of collaboration that you have with other organizations in the uh, region, especially CAFI. Uh, for example, what, what kind of, how are the roles, uh, what do you do uh, with uh, uh, work on immigration? I can only talk about the last year and a half when I've been a director, but I can tell you that uh, the uh, Neil Boucher, at, uh, the director at CAFE, we communicate on a weekly basis. Right now we have a project today that we call FISERBS. It's a project for international students. So our role with CAFE is to give uh, English courses in CAFE. Uh, they coordinate the uh, project. But we have another meeting this week, and we're going to be talking about a new project with CAFE. So collaboration that we have between MAGMA and CAFE is very strong. And once again, I can just talk for the last year and a half, and things are going well. I have the impression that it could be um, an interesting niche market for DIEP, uh, for francophones. I mean, uh, it's both languages, but we're a francophone municipality, and with CAFE and MAGMA, uh, we could easily have something, do something together to go and get that francophonie clientele. Yes, often CAFE, like I said earlier, we have 74 staff, so we're pretty big, and it's uh, often CAFE is going to call on Magma, or Magma is going to call on CAFE to help either in schools or for events where they don't have a big enough team, so we help one another. So you say that you're totally funded except for the uh, training activities, you're totally funded by the federal and provincial levels? Yes. Are you funded uh, as a block or, or by project? By project, we're funded. Thank you. Thank you, Monsieur Godet. Madame Arsenault. Thank you, Monsieur Lapierre. Really proud, very proud of you. I'm really proud of Magba and all those who work really hard. It's not always visible, but what you have presented is uh, amazing. Uh, Georges Lamour's incentive, I think, uh, very nice, uh, especially that it was done elsewhere, and I'm sure that uh, it's going to be discussed uh, for sure. Another thing, Madame McNee, you mentioned that uh, we had 364 people who have uh, worked with uh, language, and we have 192 who have graduated. So the others will be continuing to uh, so that they can get their citizenship in the required time. Generally speaking, yes, that's it, but there are times when, uh, okay, clients uh, find the jobs and they cannot continue to come to the classes. There are a couple of reasons why the number of graduates is not as uh, the same as the number that are registered, but most of the time it's because they found either a job or uh, <coughs> they don't need to continue anyway. But they do end up by getting their diploma. Yes, okay, a great thank you, you fantastic. Thank you, Madame Marcelo, Monsieur Thibodeau. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Very nice presentation. To uh, piggyback on Monsieur Alain's question, you say that you give uh, classes only in English, I mean, you have to be aware that, uh, federally speaking, the government, federal government has a policy and the provincial government has a policy in order to maintain the democratic uh, balance between Anglophones and Francophones. So are you trying to maintain this type of balance? Because I'm saying that by giving classes only in English, basically you're moving people towards the English side. It's something that happened before my time, but we had a program, Click in Magma. We were the only ones who offered the program. It was uh, French language courses. 
and there are basically also conversation circles in French. But that program, our funders decided to give them to the Dieppe college. So we were giving classes in French. Often we will put in a call for services in French, but if the funders do not uh, come up with the funds in order to do that, obviously we, uh, in fact, it's the government itself that uh, decided to divide the, uh, separate the French classes and English classes they're given. But MAGMA is uh, funded for English classes, and it's uh, elsewhere that is uh, funded by uh, in French. They're both available. Services from MAGMA, the services that are given to the population, immigrants and other, are in both languages. I spend enough time in the organization, and I know that uh, more than 50, 60 percent of the staff speak French. You see the director, the assistant, uh, most of the members of the board. Uh, okay, some of them are anglophones, just like everybody, everywhere else in New Brunswick. But there's a lot of effort put into it. And it's one of the mandates that I have also, is to promote French. Thank you. I may add also, I don't know if that you're aware of it, but we do have a satellite office in the, re in the Kent region. And that office is uh, completely... Uh, funded by the province, and we have uh, conversation circles in French. We collaborate with the college to uh, offer French classes to immigrants because they speak English already, and we know that they have to learn French because the region is Francophone. So we do what we can with the minimum of funds that we get. Thank you, Councillor Thibodeau. I would like to talk about another aspect of immigration, which is the question of there are only three centers, three communities in New Brunswick who have the right to welcome refugees. We're talking about Edmonston. I don't know if the word refugee is the good word. I need help from a colleague, Monsieur Richard, for example. Uh, Luc, maybe if you could come forward. I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, I'll do it anyway. You're there. Mm -hmm. I know that one of our families here in Dieppe has relatives in Turkey in a refugee center, and there the family here is trying to bring the rest of their family here. And 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 they're on Dover Road. They they own a house. Uh, when you when you mentioned earlier about the pride of owning one's house, uh, I can say that as soon as the the uh, offer of purchase that they made it, uh, I w was made aware of it because they were very proud of that. Our refugees, uh, these are our refugees, the most intelligent and uh, the most intelligent ones, and they're in uh, three of our French schools, Amiro Carrefour and Mathieu Martin. For, so for parents who arrive here from uh, elsewhere and who are focusing on education in French for their children, I think that they understood what our community is here, and they understood our milieu. Okay, uh, close brackets. But where where do we where are we tripping here? I think, and I don't have the term really of the organization, but I know that it's family sponsoring or something like that. It's an organization. No, sorry, it's the federal government has recognized certain organizations which have a quota for welcoming sponsorship agreement holders. And so I think that there's Edmonston has the, that possibility. And there are two organizations in the St. John region, if I'm not mistaken. Bathurst, St. John and Bathurst. No, I think it's uh, St. John. Well, this is, I mean, this is information from before Christmas when we did some research. We've uh, taken steps with Edmondson, and they're checking to see if there's not a possibility of getting, uh, uh, looking elsewhere to accommodate w with that family. I'm not an expert in the field, but, uh, gee, I'm really sorry to putting you on the spot, Richard, but, uh, but I was told somewhere along the way, since everybody is here, and it's a, basically it's an open meeting, that uh, magma had that status uh, and at one point and they lost it for a reason or another 
I don't think we ever had that status. On the other hand, there are not just three organizations in the province uh, have this. Each church in Greater Moncton have that status. Uh, it's not just a question of being recognized as a, a sponsorship agreement holder, but we have to have the funds when we uh, apply to sponsor a family. There are funds per member and we have to prove that we do have the funds or for a settlement agency to sponsor one family i don't see how it can be doable uh, on the other hand uh, we help all our families to work with organizations which have that status to kind of reunite the families in a month we're uh, receiving uh, we're welcoming uh, a son of one of the families that uh, we're working with Thank you. So just to finish, unless my questions uh, were raised, other questions, it's obvious that uh, we recognize here that we have quite a way to go uh, in this aspect that was mentioned by Councillor Alain. We're in the process uh, uh, of hiring somebody permanently to uh, work for immigration. Unfortunately, that person is on sick leave uh, long term. So we're going to be finding somebody else to fill the position in order to improve the image of the we recognize that we have challenges uh, there was a consultant who came up with a, a report with a action plan that should be uh, implemented in a couple of months so i'm sure that following this there will be other discussions with you so that you can help us, guide us, and maybe to uh, suggest other options for us. And I spent a lot of time feeling guilty about this, uh, not just uh, on a, because uh, not just on the web page, but it's the reality. And yet, there is not one person of a, a visible minority that works in the city of Dieppe. And I always say to myself, with all the international students who have graduated from the community college and from the University of Moncton, I really find this incredible that we're still at that point, at that level. And at the same time, because of certain circumstances, I think that we have to also realize that our international students are often in basement apartments uh, and they're working hard for the diplomas. But, I mean, you know, combine the two and they don't learn English. So we, as a municipality, a Francophone municipality, we offer services in both official languages. So during an interview, often, I know it, there are young people who have been refused jobs because they couldn't say three words in English. So I always encourage people from community college, people from the university who interact with students, but we have to be there to give them that same message because they come to university for French university, but they're isolated uh, language-wise, and that causes a second problem. That uh, So I feel guilty maybe less now than before, but still, we have to find solutions. We have to find... so. Uh, I'll, no, you shouldn't feel guilty because it's nobody's fault. It's a, it's a fact. As an employer, we work very hard to integrate as many people from visible minority in our staff. We have probably 15%, maybe 20% of people who come from visible minorities, uh, mainly from the university. The challenge is not the, only the English, it's just that smoke and French is not necessarily understood by people. They will understand because they've been here for a long time, everything that's being said, but uh, often it's the population that does not understand them. I work in a service and people at the cash or at the, the uh, I mean, it creates uh, special situations. Uh, what my tendency would be, and the first thing that I did was I called on Magma as an employer before I was in, on the board, and I worked very hard with people that were there to find the pearl, the pearl that I know is going to be, it's going to work. Because if it doesn't work, it's very hard to hire a second one, a third one. And the other staff around them is going to say, oh, it's complicated, I don't want to do this. So if we succeed, 
at first, it'll be a success. It'll be easier to integrate a second one or a third one. So through Magma, they'll get the person uh, who they know is going to work out. Uh, obviously, it's always the employer who has the last word on it, but at least they'll be presenting the best candidate in order to succeed. And it's important that the first one be a success. Otherwise, the project might die. Thank you. So I hope that my intervention hasn't uh, raised too many other interventions around the table, and I thank you for your presentation. And I know that Monsieur Melancier wanted to add a couple of words. Yes, for the festival, uh, you have to uh, put in a, a request. Uh, we haven't received a request formula, but our policy is very clear. We want to be a real partner. We want to welcome elements of our members. So the more activities uh, in the festival that occur in Dieppe, the more chance you're going to have a financial partnership. So I'm inviting you to put in a request, and we'll study it, and uh, we hope that we'll be able to welcome uh, the maximum amount of uh, activities possible. So we're waiting for a formal request. Thank you. Thank you, and have a good evening. Thank you. So uh, we're sorry about for the uh, delay, 15 minutes today. So now the comment front from for justice, social justice, Monsieur Paul Beliveau. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the staff. Thank you for let us speak to you tonight. I'm here as director of the organization Common Front for Justice, Social Justice, and we want to share with you information. information that we've gathered over the last eight months to prepare the program that we've launched earlier this month and uh, towards the end of uh, at March. Tonight, more on the uh, social assistance, but other aspects that uh, might be of importance. But also we'd like to tell you about certain facts that we've uh, learned about through our research. As you know, our organization is bilingual. We work in New Brunswick to fight poverty. We recognize that it's a serious problem and it delays economic evolution of the province. One out of seven has uh, low income, and most of them are workers with low wages and people on social assistance. Today we'd like to talk about a proposal to reduce poverty in these two categories of citizens. We believe that it's important to highlight that the majority, 58%, 58.8% of workers on uh, minimum wage in 2016 were 20 years old and older, and and the 48% worked with, worked for employers that have 500 employers or more employees or more. So it's not just little organizations, and it was a myth that if you're a small company, you can't pay large wages. But we indicate we see that 48 percent work in uh, jobs uh, where 500 employees or more. The workers that work f for less than 15 dollars an hour, raising to 15 dollars an hour would be good for the local economy, their family, and it would be beneficial for women because most of, half of them work f at minimum salary, minimum wage. Doing this increases the power of purchase of over 105,000 workers in New Brunswick. 
there were 57.6% of the GDP uh, from consumers. They could purchase in more purchase power. When the minimum wage increases, there's less rollover of staff. We hear often they're going to leave to get uh, a dollar and a quarter more elsewhere. So we have to hire more people. So that is a cost for businesses. That's one way of reducing rollover. One fifth, approximately 17.1% of citizens go to food banks. Their workers, mostly uh, low wages, 17%. An increase of their uh, income would help them be healthier. And also, it was reduce the amount of people in uh, food banks and reduce the costs on uh, health services. So, the proposal is to increase the minimum, minimum wage by one hour, an hour, each year for the next four years, indexed. Also, financial help to community organizations that receive funds and who offer services to citizens with uh, low wages and those who are in need. This financial help would be equivalent to the increase of the minimum wage and it would include the part of the employers for each employee in uh, minimum wage of that organization. We know that it's these organizations who can only pay minimum wage. And once again, they have the responsibility of being the social net uh, unfortunately, the net is in uh, bad repair. Thousands of men, women, and children have depend social assistance. It's clear for us that uh, change is needed, specifically concerning income. Table one shows and you would have it normally but i'll give you a detailed report that you'll be able to consult later i only have one copy because uh, printing budget is very small so we hope you'll be indulgent and you will share it The basic rate is 537 per month for social assistance since 2010. And these are people who are on social assistance long term, and some of them is just transitory, and some of them have specific needs. So they have the same amount of, m amount of money as eight years ago, whereas inflation continues to increase which means that these people, these families, cannot feed themselves properly. They can't live in proper housing, and their children often go to school without eating. How many schools have breakfast programs for children? Uh, many. If not for them, many children would spend time with uh, nothing eaten before lunch. These there are negative consequences, and they produce increased costs for our health services. It's important to understand that two-thirds of people who go to food banks to survive receive social welfare. I won't give you all the figures. You have them before you. Figures that uh, show the rates that are given per month for different categories of people who need help with income. More income is better for the local economy. For minimum wage, the increase would have advantages for people, families, and businesses. Uh, technology is great when it works. Okay, 
Listen, uh, right now, maybe I'm going to start singing. Just to say that for all this, Common Front for Social Justice is proposing to increase the basic rate by 13% in 2018, 2019 for people who can work. That's one of the categories, people who can work. We're going to increase also the basic rate by 5% in 2018, 2019 for all the other beneficiaries and index it afterwards. There'll be an annual <coughs> income total equal to the um, consumer basket. This is uh, something that comes from the federal. It was adapted by provinces to figure out how much it costs to have somebody, uh, one person, a single person, a family, family with one child with two children, I can tell you that there are very few people who probably could live with properly with this basket. We looked at it, we looked towards the inside, it, it's, it's no luxury here. The other proposals that uh, we would like to give you is that the Common Front for Social Justice has concerning employment norms, standards for workers, uh, specific situations of citizens with a handicap or who have social welfare or... So we invite you to consult our website, www.frontnb.ca. So that's the presentation tonight. I'd also like to uh, mention that we have two colleagues here. I'm the general director and I have Jean-Claude Basque and another uh, colleague, Monsieur Adrien Léger, who are here to make sure that uh, I'm doing my job properly. If you have any questions, and if I don't have the answer, well, I'll turn around and I'll look at Jean-Claude and I'll tell him to come up here. Any questions from the councillors? Comments? Mrs. Arsenault, thank you, Your Worship. Mr. Bidivo, it's always a pleasure to see you at the mic. You always take uh, subjects that are heartwarming for the citizens. We all want to do good for our community. We want to keep our people higher than the level of poverty. So I hope, like you do, and your friends, that uh, you will succeed and will succeed to be to overcome. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. And I understand your worship and members of council. It's not a jurisdiction. We're not talking about a municipal jurisdiction, but believe me, if ever there, not if, but when there is improvement, the municipalities will benefit from it. The pre uh, previous presentation, they talk about the purchase of a house. Housing is important for everyone. And in situation that some people are living in, once again, I was a student and I live in an apartment. It was very nice. It was a palace compared to what uh, exists today. Thank you, Mr. Gannett. Thank you, Your Worship. Good presentation, Paul. I have a question. As to the uh, annual guaranteed income, we talk about, we hear about it. Some people uh, promote that, and some countries have adopted. How does the front see that that proposal? Is it is it viable? Is it uh, a possibility? Is it worthwhile using it? in the uh, near future. This is where my uh, colleague will come forward. I will say that the program that you just put forward, Councillor Gaudet, is uh, something that is not only beneficial, but generates in people that have it some benefits, but it's a policy that has existed for 30, 35, 40 years. It's not one that has produced results immediately. If I may, I find that nowadays in our social political context in Canada, there's little patience. 
So to propose a program that will take 10 to 15 years, it's hard for a government to say, well, put it forward, we'll implement it, and wait for the results to show up. Time after time, the results are positive. So to say, is it supplementary to the $15 that we are proposing? But the $15 that we're proposing has to do with a minimum salary, while the $15 would be more or less uh, the guaranteed income for everyone. And it brings another level of commitment. It has to become something, change of government would remain the same, but it's not something that the front, we don't have it as an issue. Other groups are working on it, but we'll certainly work uh, shoulder to shoulder with other organizations. Thank you. Thank you for the question. It was mine. That is one question I was going to ask. As for the annual minimum guaranteed uh, salary, thank you. Other questions from counselors? No? All right. So, Jubilee, thank you for your presentation. What are your expectations from the municipal council? You're as, are you a salesman who's not asking for anything? Is there, uh, Jacques, do we have a figure? It's in your role, and uh, it's to support the spirit of uh, doing something to take the people out of poverty. I can see the municipality would not be the first beneficiary. Of course, it would be them, the people, who find themselves in less enviable uh, situation. But the first level that would benefit from it would be our local community, our municipalities, and then the benefit would be felt everywhere else. But we would be contributing to create a healthy community in good health and maybe to uh, start uh, potentials breaking uh, the barrier of not knowing what to eat. If you want to do some lobbying for us, would that be okay, Jean-Claude? Yes. We encourage you, when you have contact with the government, to remember the message that we share with you tonight. We would appreciate your support. Thank you. My question did not bring other questions from the counselors on that. Thank you for your presentation, and we will consider your comments as we keep going forward with the files. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Good evening, everyone. Next presentation on continued improvement. I say that as it with Mrs. Spencer. Good evening, Your Worship, members of Council. It's hard to follow all these nice presentations that are very appropriate. I'm here on behalf of the Continued Improvement Committee to give you a report on the 2017 and to talk to you about what is planned for 2018. We're talking about the Committee of the Continued Improvement for the City of the, the Staff. I'm the spokesperson year after year. So just, you won the draw, <laughs> yes. Just to remind you, the vision of the committee is that every committee work together in the same direction, in a common goal, and to be proud and committed to uh, contribute to the improvement and the work uh, within the city of Diet. And also, what we aim with our project is to have an impact on the quality of our services with the benefits, with some benefits for the citizens. And we want economy of time and money, or both, to have a positive return on our investment. We notice with time that sometimes some ideas were good, but the people were not always available to work on these projects. So today we look at the availability of the resources and the time needed to implement the projects. And we have an environmental concern for the projects. 
So if the project can have an environmental benefit, so be it. To remind you the history, we started the initiative in 2014. In 2015, a standing committee was established. In 2016, if you remember, nine managers were trained. 38 tours of waste and waste was uh, initiated now. We'll go to 2017, the beginning of the year. We had four sessions of round table, 40 persons contributed. We were asking questions like, do you feel involved? What do you know of continued improvement? What can we improve of these sessions with the employees that were uh, chosen at random? Uh, derive some uh, actions such as Sibar uh, Info. They said we don't really know what is happening. We establish cyber info. We wanted them to know what is uh, an example of waste. Uh, and something else that came out, everybody did not feel involved. Some services or sector had no project so far. So to try and remedy this, we ask every director to find two or three projects per service in their given sector where they are on a waiting list. As soon as one project is ready, there'll be more and more in different sectors. It started already. The other thing that we realized that was uh, missing, we have a committee, some belts, green belts, that are committed, that are involved, but there was a lag between the two. Now we have a new coordinator. I'll talk to you uh, more about this uh, in the next few slides. If you remember in 2017, we asked the interest of uh, employees. We had about 10 names and four persons were cho chosen that had to receive the training of Green Belt. They all undertook projects. I don't go into, I don't want to go into details, but just to mention one example, the collect of garbage in the park, the employees who were picking the garbage had a challenge because the people sometimes were putting their house garbage in those uh, cans. One solution is to have different garbage can with different openings so that to stop people from sending, a, to putting a bag in it. It's simple solutions that make the work of employees a lot more interesting and less uh, painful. Also, we organized uh, four other sessions. Another 40 persons were trained in white belt on the continued improvement. And they were asked uh, to organize a waste uh, uh, tour. And the example you see here are operators of uh, the uh, uh, the plow, it was written in text, turn right on John, and they said sometimes they had to stop, read the text. Suggestion came from them to add some arrows. It's hard to see on the screen, however. Now visually, they see that when they come to the end of the street, they have to turn on the next street. So it makes the work easier. A pictogram, they call. The other thing we're uh, proud is uh, we uh, develop a logo and slogan, Improvement Diet. It's the official uh, logo of the municipality, and the point in the middle is uh, the uh, reaching of a common goal. As I explained with the example with the garbage can, it's to make our work easier and to more pleasant when we get up in the morning when we have a task that is painful to accomplish is not always uh, fun when I was talking about cyber info we created um, a section in the internet that's called cyber info and all the former cyber info can be fine found and people can read them over again if they so wish here is an example of cyber info that was talking about the uh, bylaw application uh, officers. One of the simple solution was instead of coming back to the office and printing a notice, they now have some notice that they can put on handles, on door, door handles. So if it has to do with dogs or 
whatever it may be, they can hang it on the doorknob. So they can save uh, from going back and forth. <coughs> and following each cyber info, we encourage our colleagues to reach us, so the members of the committee, Raymond Bork, Steve Landry, Maxima, and myself, and the green training and training, green belt, and the new coordinator's name will be added. So, if you remember, we had an objective of to uh, save $525,000 by the end of 2019. To give you a picture for 2017, it's about $145,000 in savings. This is one of the lack. Nobody was compiling the information. So the coordinator at the present time, the change of role over the years, she is compiling everything. So we hope at the next update to have on a yearly basis, but we uh, uh, plan to reach the objective by the end of 2019, it would be 525 per year, a thousand dollars. For the year 2018, as I mentioned, we have a new coordinator. We were able to free uh, some uh, responsibility to Nicole Bourgeois. She will start, be, have a link between the different uh, group. She's well organized. She will coordinate the paperwork and the data and everything else. Uh, also, the other thing I'd like to mention, the conference is coming, uh, Canadian Lean Summit. So, uh, two green belt uh, recipients attended last year. They like it and they accept it at the annual meeting of the employees to share their experience with the colleagues. Even if you're nervous a little bit to talk in front of their colleagues, they did a very good job, if I may say so. And we want to continue uh, white belt training so that everyone will have a basic training. There's about 50 left to be had and the directors will receive training also to better integrate the change and the notion in our own services and the training of green uh, training is ongoing. That's all from my presentation. If you have any questions, clue. questions from the counselors. Uh, No. Well, the mayor has one or two. Do we have any black belts? <laughs> Myself, I received some training in black belts. Now with the change uh, in responsibility, um, the, the answer is no, we don't have any black belts. That's the uh, simple answer. All right. All right. Something to work on because the continued improvement program without a black belt, it's like. It's like trying to run a marathon down with one leg only. And I forgot to add, Nicole plays the role at the present time. If you know her, you know that she is retiring shortly. So it's to organize it everything well and the discussion we should have is do we want a full-time position that would probably be a black belt position to continue the work it's our last year with the consultant and we're finishing uh, the training and then there'll be something else monsieur Ayla. the consultant is uh, ending this year, we completed his contract. Within the succession plan, would we need to hire the service of the individual or is it given, is it up to that group to give us a succession plan? Your Worship, if I, if I may, with the consultant and the committee, we are presently developing a manual that will explain the role and the task. We want to be able to continue. Doesn't mean in the future that we may need specialized service if we undertake something specific, but it's uh, allow us to work. I fully agree with the mayor when there's no black belt, it's hard to, we lose the meeting of the project or the meeting of some projects. So,
If I may add, Your Worship, it's a question that we have discussed with the consultant and the committee to see if it's the appropriate time to have a black belt in the evolution of our maturity and within the continued integration, we have debate that are ongoing because often organization projects uh, of ways that are more beneficial within the organization than to have green belt and black belt to work in big, heavy projects. So it's, it's, this is the discussion we're having with Derek, Derek Fling, the uh, consultant, and the experience of having Nicole Bourgeois, who will coordinate all the elements that will uh, structure us uh, to maybe uh, reach that level. We talk about black belt. We always wish to have someone internally to graduate to that level because if we go find someone outside, it would be quite expensive. So there's this whole logic, the evolution of our maturity that will be part and parcel of our decision. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you for the presentation. I think it's important that the council be made aware of the program and be updated and also to see where we're going with our uh, continued uh, improvement program. We've heard it for those uh, who participate uh, with Expansion Dieppe, the CRID program that uh, save a lot of money to local uh, businesses and it's based on continued improvement. Sometimes we think about the manufacturing sector as being easier to do than the municipal sector. Some experience of uh, municipal sector exists area elsewhere in Canada on which we could base ourselves to try and make sure that all our municipal systems uh, operate uh, at full uh, performance with the best possible service for our citizens. Thank you and good evening. And now, the time we've been waiting, what we've been waiting for, the one who will give us uh, the uh, earth, uh, day at the Quebec members of council, your worship, good evening. So that's it. It's interesting because from time to time, not often, but sometimes we hear about a couple married or a boyfriend and girlfriend and uh, well, things go relatively well, but finally their relationship uh, end up and the members of the couple, they were attracted to the brothers and sisters of the others, but they never acted on it because uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> you realize we're on the web, eh, don't you? <laughs> Just want to make sure that you know. <laughs> so where am I going? Well, for 10 years, we produced the event in Moncton at the Moncton market. Moncton was happy, and they were always ha happy that the Edmund Review was supporting the event, and together we could all go to Moncton. But I'll jump the details. We're not organizing the event in Moncton this year. And I'm doing it in the app. I'm very happy. Everyone with my committee and myself, we're happy. Things are going very well. So we have no regret about what happened in the past, but we're happy with the relationship we're having with Dieppe. So the people of uh, the, the city, Julie Belanger, Julie Albert, they are helping us uh, very much. And it's not the municipality of Dieppe, but Maxime Gova with the Ricole de Chenou and Primil, who is also the manager of the Dieppe market. Everything is going well, and we wonder why we didn't do it before. It's going so well. Well, there. For the first time, this is our 11th year. The event is happening in Dieppe, and it will happen in Dieppe for some time to come. One reason why I say this is that the Ericot de Chinoux, 
their objective, their mandate, are very aligned with the objective of our event this year. The expo, we always have an expo, a section with exhibitors. This year, we use the title, Eat and Help Real Food, Green Living. Those who know me know that I have been supporting for a long time the local food, healthy food. When I say healthy food, I differentiate between products, uh, wrap people that are eatable and drinkable that are wrap, and uh, food that are not wrap. What is wrap should not even be called food. If we are on Mars, that's one thing. If we're uh, dying, uh, uh, we can eat those elements, our exports call, eat uh, food and help in French, it's triple W, all the, the short in English, go beyond earth day dot com. And the list of exhibitors will be there, and we're happy because we have a lot more exhibitors than usual. But I'll leave you to find it yourself, some organization, deal with healthy uh, food, some people offer mentorship uh, for parents, for anyone who don't know how to find food for affordable cost and how to prepare a food. So we also have the Garden City Project, uh, whose purpose is to find a hundred different community gardens. There's a lot of organization the conservation of nature. These are projects related to food. Uh, they will be organization organizing uh, outside uh, activities. Presentation like tonight, that uh, which purpose is to strengthen, to improve the community link or relationship. How can someone have concern to act on the conservation of nature if themselves, if their life is not in order? I always say that compassion for others is as important as uh, their respect for nature. Both go together when we uh, uh, make as much attention to our neighbors, they will... Uh, uh, bring some attention to the river and streams and whatever. So, the, on April 22nd, this Sunday, starting at 9 o'clock in the morning with a yoga course for all age and all level, every element uh, activity is uh, free except the buffet. It costs $5 for children, $10 for adults. But even the buffet, if someone comes and they offer a volunteer for the event, they eat free of charge. So the program of the day at 9 o'clock in the morning, we have a yoga activity for all those who want to come. And uh, the, at 10 o'clock in the morning, there is a, a singing activity it comes from Ireland that is related to yoga. Then there's a First Nation activity that includes blessing, multi-religion, representative from different faiths that will share a small blessing for the earth. So this is moderated, there's a drums, there's community dancing. This brings us to noon. For our buffet of, uh, of local products, the menu is on the website. It's roasted uh, chicken, quiche, vegetarian for those who the roasted uh, egg, uh, potatoes, blueberry pie, fair trade, uh, and uh, apple juice that come from companies such as uh, local uh, orchards, uh, companies in the afternoon as Two o'clock, we've always had problems with the afternoon activities. We always had problems, but this year, I think one of the best so far. It's an activity that will be led by international uh, speaker. She deals with communication. She's Rosen Roy. And she will share for an hour and a half. She will not only share principles on communications, empathy, Empathic communication is when we communicate 
with the purpose of understanding what the other one is sharing, how he or she feels. Because sometimes when we have a conflict, when we deal, communicate with someone in distress, well, often we either agree or disagree with what they're saying or how they are. And com empathic communication is the principle of listening to understand. We don't have to agree or disagree. To understand uh, what the person is living emotionally is very useful for people who are in distress. That is a program uh, that will happen with the uh, stage and then with the exhibition exists all day. We have activities for the children all day long, especially. There's an organization called Casa Yoga. Her name is Sarah. I think her last name is Terio. Casa Yoga, they're part and parcel of international uh, activity. So it's fantastic to have them all day long. People can uh, do some yoga, there'll be other activities. Uh, so the children will uh, organize something with earth, with uh, grain, they can bring it home and they can uh, put it in the soil. There'll be other activities for the children. For instance, we have uh, several prizes, almost 300 prizes this year. And the idea is that we want the children to have uh, to uh, uh, embellish their uh, neighbor uh, neighborhood. Maybe they will get involved with an organization at the exhibition as a volunteer. Any commitment that a child wants to bring involvement will give them either a prize or put their name for a draw at random. For we have a few big uh, big prizes, a small and that is. Uh, Today, as I say, the website, as you see, is uh, www.gobian.com. I don't know what the are. Oh, yeah, yeah. So these are sponsors. The top you see, Jep, and like every other year, you've supported us. This year, you've supported us again, not just financially, but also with help uh, with uh, Julie, uh, Julie Belanger, and the uh, for communication. And I believe that. I think uh, this is the start of a uh, nice relation between you, Récord de Chenou, the market, and the city of Dieppe to grow the event. So that we can all support ourselves, one, cell, one another. Julie put me in contact with uh, André, I think. Uh, and he can't be there, but he's going to make sure that uh, the projects that you're involved in, ecological projects, uh, so that we have our MCs, uh, and also if uh, one of you is going to be there, that we can talk and we can share this, so that we want this event, we've always had this event to promote, to support all the organizations of the region, and we would like in the future to have the city of Jep and this event work together uh, towards those uh, ecological initiatives. And I believe that's it. Uh, I just had two slides, and that's it. I don't know if you have any questions. Questions from members of council. Madame Arsenault, thank you. Very nice presentation. I listened, and I think that it's uh, very nice. I understand that the program that you're presenting is going to turn into a beautiful day. I'm sorry that I won't be able to be there. I will be outside of the region, but uh, truly, it uh, promises to be really great. Thank you. Anybody else? Nobody else? If not, uh, well, once again, I want to thank you again for your involvement in this uh, Earth Day. It's been a couple of years that I go to the event. We've had uh, really good group discussions, uh, good uh, circle discussions, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'll be there in the afternoon, and I'm really looking forward to it. 
I'm going to try to see how many of my uh, grandchildren I can bring along with me to make sure that they're aware of these types of things. I've got to start them young. Yeah, that's uh, super. This is what we have to do. Anybody else? No? So that's it. I know that a couple of uh, members of council that plan to go there, uh, particularly now that we don't have to go across the uh, marsh, it's uh, easier. So, and I'm happy to hear the good comments uh, concerning the logistical aspects and the, the good uh, agreements with uh, the group of the, from the market. I know that uh, there's Maxime and... Uh, but I mean, yeah, I'm, I always get mixed up on that. They work really hard in promoting this. And I know that recently there were a couple of activities that were held there. The Chamber of Commerce had an exhibit uh, there, and it was probably the biggest exhibit that they've had ever locally. I'm not talking about uh, parties at uh, Beau Séjour, but uh, uh, presentation and, ex and exhibitors uh, is, it was the biggest uh, one there. So it's uh, significant, the work that is being, that is being done there. So we want to thank Paul-Emile and Maxime for that. Monsieur Godet, something that I learned very early in my career is uh, never speak after the boss, but uh, but since, uh, as you can all see, I'm someone that is actually ready to accept everything. Earlier was Madame Arsenault after I spoke. Not that uh, I noticed, but uh, still, go ahead, Mr. Godet. Uh, all right, I forgot what I wanted to say. Now, I just wanted to mention that uh, Regardless of the fact that we have to cross the uh, river to go to Moncton, uh, we'd have to invite uh, the Greater Moncton to come visit us in Dieppe. It's not just a, a Dieppe event. It's uh, so we invite everybody uh, to come. But uh, the Moncton's mayor will be there, and uh, members of the council also will be there from Moncton. And I mean, feel free to promote the event uh, through your contacts. I believe that people who go to the website and see what's going on, normally something is going to interest them for sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. See you soon. See you on Sunday. Good evening, everybody. No, no, you don't have your four minutes here. That's it. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. There's an update on the public uh, Kodiak. There have been no meetings, no nothing. So, okay. So, everybody, have a nice evening.